Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany and today we are going to be selling an indie pattern. If you're not sure what indie pattern is, it's just a short phrase for independent pattern designer. So there are people who have their own pattern lines, their own pattern companies that are not the big four commercial patterns. They are independent pattern designers and today I'm going to be making this Roscoe blouse by True Bias. Before I get started, I have to say that I am not affiliated or sponsored with True Bias. I saw this top online, I liked it, I bought it, I printed it out and I made it. <laughs> and I figured, okay, why not just turn the camera on and record it so that I can start uh, doing more videos from indie pattern designers. So this will be the first one and I'm really excited about it. I used a rayon chalet for this fabric. I know there's a lot of you that have concerns with this fabric, with it being really slippery and kind of slinky and just kind of a mess to work with. <laughs> Um, I actually love it though. I did not add any stabilizer to the fabric while I was making it. And my one tip would be if you're having trouble sewing it would be to add a walking foot. My sewing machine has like a walking foot already attached to it so you'll see that in the sewing clips. So if you're having problems and you have a walking foot maybe you want to try popping that on to see will that help you get more control of your fabric while you're sewing. When I was sewing the pattern I noticed there are differences as far as commercial patterns to indie patterns or this one in particular. The biggest thing is the seam allowance. Uh, the seam allowance for this pattern is at a half an inch seam allowance as opposed to a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So let's keep that in mind while we're sewing. Um, if you want to follow along with me and sew this pattern, I have a link to truebias.com. You can go on their website, look through their patterns, download the PDF version if you want that one, or you can get the hard copy. I did the PDF download. I printed it off at home, taped it together, and cut it out. So go ahead and get your pattern, cut out your fabric, and let's get started sewing. All right, y'all, so here is my pattern. I have it all cut out. This is what PDF patterns look like when you print them from your computer at home and you tape them together. So I have uh, printed my pattern. I cut it all out. I have my fabric cut and I have my instructions right here on my tablet. Again, this is the Roscoe blouse. It is from True Bias and this is in the size 14 through 30. And I cut the size 14 for this pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll up to the instructions which is right here, I believe, step one, and I'm gonna get started sewing. All right, the first step is with taking the front, which is pattern piece number one, and the neck facing pattern piece number six. We are going to open this out right sides facing, and I put a snip right here in the center. I also put a snip on the center of my facing here, and I'm just gonna line those up and just get this right down the middle. Okay, I'm gonna grab some pins and I'm gonna pin this in place. Okay, so now I have my stitching line. I'm gonna go ahead and just make that line darker. So right at the snip that I place at the notch and down to my mark, I'm gonna just draw a straight line. Okay, that's better. So now I'm gonna begin stitching. First, I'm gonna reduce my stitch length. The pattern says reduce it to 1.5. And then from a quarter of an inch away from that center cutting line, I'm gonna stitch it down. And then you're gonna to get to about 1 16th once you get down to the end. Do two stitches along the bottom and then stitch back up the other side in the same manner. So I'm gonna go ahead to the machine and do that now. So right here is my center line and I'm a quarter of an inch away from that. I've also reduced my stitch length to 1.5 per the instructions. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and begin stitching straight down here. And I'm, we're gonna be stitching at an angle. So by the time we get to the end, we should be about 1 16th away from the end of the cutting line. Alright, so I've just made my stitch along the front, so now I'm just going to cut right down that cutting line. Like so. And now I'm going to grab my snippers here and I'm just going to snip into the corners, being sure not to go through the stitching. And so now we're just going to flip the facing through to the inside. 
Okay, so once you have it flipped, now we can go ahead and give this a press. Now that we have the facing pressed toward the inside, the instruction says next to go ahead and trim the facing down to 5 eighths of an inch. So I have my ruler here. I'm going to flip this over. This is a side of it. I'm going to find 5 eighths of an inch. I'm going to line it up to the crease. And whatever is left, I'm going to trim that off. Okay, I've trimmed this down to 5 eighths of an inch. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side here. Okay, so I've just trimmed my facing down to 5 eighths of an inch on the sides and along the bottom. And now we're going to turn under the edges of the facing so they touch the inside and then we're going to do an edge stitch right along the fold. Once you have the sides folded and pressed then you can fold up the bottom as well. So let's go ahead and fold all the raw edges under, give it a press. All right so I've gone ahead and folded in the raw edges of the facing so now I'm going to go to the machine and I'm going to do an edge stitch right along the folded edge. I'm going to pivot once I get to the bottom and then when I get to the other side I'm going to pivot and continue going back up. So let's go ahead and edge stitch the facing now. <laughs> So once you have the, your front facing complete, the next step is to start working on the sleeves. And I took a look at the instructions and I have never put a sleeve on like this. So I'm excited to give that a try. So we're on step five right now. And it says to match up the front right sides facing with the sleeve. Here's the front with the single notch. So we're gonna put that right sides facing here and we're going to pin that in place. I'm gonna do the same thing for this side. So for this sleeve, I'm gonna find the front. Okay, here's my single notch. I'm gonna match that up and pin it in place. All right, now that I have the sleeves, the front portion pinned on to this top right sides facing, now we can go ahead and stitch. And the seam allowance for this pattern is a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna stitch at a quarter of an inch and then I'm gonna finish off my seams with my serger. Alright, so I've just stitched on the front armhole of my sleeves and I was going to finish off my seam allowances but then I thought let me just go ahead and attach the back and then I can do that all at the same time. So here's my back right here. So the right side's facing. I'm going to bring over this portion of the sleeve. I'm going to match this up right side's facing like so. Match up my notches and pin it in place. All right, now I'm going to bring this sleeve here. This is the back. I'm going to bring it over to this back, right sides facing. I'm going to match up my double notches here and begin to pin. All 
Okay, so I have the back on and it's pinned to the back of the sleeves. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this at a half an inch seam allowance. Then I'm gonna finish off the seam allowances for all the seams. All right, now that we have the front and back and the sleeves sewn on, I've gone ahead and finished off my seam allowances with my serger here. So now we're gonna go ahead and pin the top and the sleeves right sides facing. So grab your pins, you want to match your notches. So my underarm seam, I'm going to match that here. And I'm going to make sure I have the seams even and matching up and putting them in place. And I'm just going to continue pinning the sleeve and the side seam. All right, once you have one side seam pinned and sleeve, you're gonna do the same thing to the other side. And then starting from the sleeve, we're gonna begin stitching at half an inch seam allowance all the way down to the hem. And then you can finish off your seam allowances. Now that we have our side seams sewn and our sleeves sewn, we can go ahead and give our seams a good press. We can put this to the side and start to work on our neckties. So to begin working on our ties, the first thing that we're going to do is fold our fabric in half with wrong sides facing lengthwise like so, and then we're gonna give that a good press. Once you have pressed it in half, then we're going to open it out and we're gonna fold the raw edges into this crease. So I'm gonna fold this one in and press it. I'm gonna fold this one in as well and press it all the way down. Once we have those sides pressed, then we can fold it in half. So let's go ahead and press the raw edges in now. So now I've just pressed in the raw edges. Next, just fold it in half and give it a final press. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the other tie. Now that we have pressed our neckties, we can go to the sewing machine and we can do an edge stitch right on that open edge to secure the neckties. And I've also gone ahead and I tucked in one end of the tie, so one side is raw, that will be the side that we connect to the neck facing, and this one right here is gonna be at the end. So I've gone ahead and just tucked that in. So let's go ahead and edge stitch our ties now. Now that we have our ties complete and sewn, now we can go ahead and start doing some gathers around the neckline. So go ahead and grab your top. And the first row of gathers is gonna be at a scant half an inch. And then the next one is gonna be at a 3 8 of an inch. So let's head to the machine now. And I'm not going to come all the way to the edge. I'm just gonna start right here beside the front facing where we stitched. That's where I will start with my gathers. So let's go ahead and do the gathers now. So the instruction said to do the first row of gathers at a scant half an inch seam allowance. Now my machine has that built in. It has it built in for a scant quarter of an inch. And that stitch is mostly used in quilting. So I'm gonna zoom in so you can see how my needle moves because right now it's in the center. So I'm gonna press the stitch and you'll see how much it moves over. So that right there, it took it over about what is that, 1 16th or 1 8th, about a two stitch length. Um, so it's not quite a quarter of an inch, it comes up a little bit shorter. So I'm just gonna use that stitch, I'm gonna line my fabric up with a half an inch and go ahead and do my first row of basting. The second one is gonna be done at a 3 8 of an inch. All 
All right, now that we have done our gathering stitches, I have both rows on the neckline of the top. So now we can go ahead and grab our neckline binding. This is mine here, and I've gone ahead and pressed up a half an inch on the unnotched edge. So this is my binding piece here. I've already pressed up, again, a half an inch. So now we can pull up on our gathers and then pin our neck binding on, matching up the seams to the notches that's on the binding. All right, I have gathered up my stitches and I've also pinned on my neck binding. I used the notches in the binding and I matched them up with the seams. So that is a guide for you to make sure that you have everything in the right place. And it should also be a half inch that's left over right here along the front edge. So now we can go ahead and stitch our binding in place at a half an inch seam allowance. I want to stitch this with the gathers facing up. That way I can adjust them if need be once I get to them. All right, now that we have the binding sewn on, you wanna go ahead and press your seam up toward the binding and then remove your basting stitch. Next, you wanna go ahead and grab one of your ties. We're gonna take the edge that is not done, so the unfinished side, and we're gonna place it right here along the edge of the binding. So I have it right here toward the bottom. And the raw edges are even. I'm gonna go ahead and pin it in place there. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. So I'm going to take the portion that we did not finish and I'm going to line it up right here so that raw edges are even with the binding. And I'm going to pin it in place. The next step is to fold down the top edge of the binding. We're going to be sandwiching the tie in between the facing. And so you want to make sure also that you bring the facing down per the instructions. It says 1 16th past the seam where the binding and the neckline is sewn. So right here, you want to make sure you bring this down past that seam about 1 16th and then we can pin that in place. Now that we have the ties pinned, we're going to go to the machine and we're going to stitch right here at a scant half an inch seam allowance. Now that we have our ties stitched on, we can go ahead and trim the seam allowance down. So this is what my ties are looking like right now once I have them flipped out to the right side. The next step, we're going to go ahead and fold over the folded edge of the facing and pin it in place so that it is covering that seam. And we can put our pins along the right side here because we're gonna be stitching in the ditch. So you wanna make sure that your folded edge is going just past the seam so we'll be able to stitch in the ditch. And just continue pinning your neck binding on. All right, once you have your neck binding pinned on, then from the right side, we're going to stitch in the ditch, making sure that we catch this folded edge on the inside. So let's go ahead and secure our binding now. All right, now that we have our neck binding secured, and for me, I actually did like an edge stitch as opposed to stitching in the ditch. So this is what mine looks like here. I just need to give it one final press. So the next step is to begin working on our sleeve binding. So I'm gonna put the top to the side. Here are my sleeve binding pieces here. The first thing that we're going to do is with right sides facing, we're going to fold the sleeve binding in half, and then we're gonna stitch at a half an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do that for both binding 
sleeve bindings, go ahead and stitch it at a half an inch seam allowance. Once we have stitched it at a half an inch seam allowance, you wanna go ahead and trim it down to a quarter of an inch and press your seams open. Now that we have pressed the seam open on our unnotched side, we are going to press under a half an inch. So on the unnotched side, go ahead and press around a half an inch. And I'm just eyeballing it, but you can always pull out your seam gauge to get an accurate measurement. All right, so this is one sleeve binding. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other one. Now that we have the sleeve bindings complete, we can put these to the side. And now we can go ahead and put gathering stitches on our sleeve hems. And we're gonna gather these the same exact way that we gathered the neckline. So the first one is gonna be at a scant half an inch and then the other one will be at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do our gathering stitches now. All right, I've just sewn on my gathering stitches along the sleeves. So now I'm just gonna pull up my gathering stitches and then I will pin on my binding, making sure that I match up the seam and the notch. Once you have your sleeve binding pinned on, we can go ahead and stitch at a half an inch seam allowance. All right, now that we have sewn our sleeve binding on and you've trimmed down your seam allowance, now we're just going to fold that folded edge right over so it's about 1 16th past that seam. And then we're gonna place pins onto the right side of the fabric so we can do a stitch in the ditch. So I'm gonna just continue folding it over and pinning in place. Once you have pinned down the facing for your sleeve binding, now we can go to the machine and you can do a stitch in the ditch. I'm probably gonna do the same as I did for the neckline and just do like an edge stitch, but let's go ahead and stitch the binding for the sleeves now. All right, so here are my sleeves. I have them all finished and I did an edge stitch instead of a stitch in the ditch, just like I did for the binding around the neckline. So now that the sleeves are all done, the last step is to go ahead and do our hem. And for the hem, we're gonna fold up a quarter of an inch and then fold up a quarter of an inch again and go ahead and stitch our hem in place. All right, so I've just stitched my hem in place. So I did a quarter of an inch and then I folded that up again a quarter of an inch and just stitched right along the inner fold. I'm gonna give my top one final press and I am all done with my Roscoe blouse by True Bias. Well, that is all for the video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do hope that you all enjoyed the video. I am so excited to start adding more indie patterns here and start sewing them on the YouTube channel. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your notifications, and I'll see you in the next video. Blessings, everyone. Bye.